Welcome to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And as you know, I always endeavor to make drinks with fresh ingredients and not use any mixes or compromise in that way for the most part. And we're going to kind of go in a different direction today because we're going to start, a, start talking about a new trend that has become quite popular in the past five to eight years, and that is using liquid nitrogen to make cocktails. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that I'm not gonna actually demonstrate the use of this because you have to have a lot of special equipment to do that. And there is a certain amount of danger associated with liquid nitrogen preparation to make cocktails also. Basically, it has to be done by someone who's been trained how to use liquid nitrogen. But special equipment-wise, you have to have the nitrogen in a special container called a doer, which is basically a double-sided container with a glass sleeve. And it's pressurized so that the nitrogen will stay in place and won't explode or evaporate. And of course, the obvious advantage in using liquid nitrogen is you can get things super, super cold without the use of any ice. And that's a big advantage because we've talked about this before, but ice sometimes encourages dilution and we don't want dilution in our cocktails. So that's one advantage of liquid nitrogen. Plus alcohol doesn't freeze until it reaches a temp temperature of below minus 300 Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. And liquid nitrogen can at least accomplish that. Whereas even dry ice is not going to get that cold. It's probably minus 100 or more, but nowhere is near liquid nitrogen. So in addition to the doers, you also need special gloves, a metal mixing bowl with a handle, because you're going to pour the liquid nitrogen in first and then you're gonna add your ingredients, and then, of course, copious quantities as you stir it of smoke are gonna come up, which creates quite a show. And it's gonna get those ingredients in a frozen, like slushy um, type consistency. And then you can spoon it into a glass, and then you have a nice cocktail. Because again, it is super, super cold. But again, there's dangers associated with it, which we will talk about in some future episodes. But the cocktails that I'm going to make today are actually designed uh, to use with liquid nitrogen, although, like I mentioned, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to simply prepare them in a shaker. And they're super, super strong because you can get away with a very strong cocktail when you make it near freezing or freezing because that palatability will still be there. And the first drink that we're gonna make actually contains rum, coconut rum, and uh, vodka, believe it or not. And in addition to that, a pineapple mango juice. And we're gonna use for each of our drinks today a peach garnish, which is kind of a departure from what we normally do. But anything citrus basically doesn't go with these drinks. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm gonna set about getting the ice in the shaker first and getting the ingredients in. And you can pretend that we're making this liquid nitrogen style, although we're not. So I'm gonna get my ice, first of all. And again, if we had liquid nitrogen, we wouldn't have to worry about dilution at all. But because we're going to shake it up right away, that's not going to be a problem. So first of all, I'm going to add a bit of coconut rum. And again, this drink is quite alcohol laden, but it's a good drink. And you can just uh, dream about it being in an upscale bar and having it prepared with liquid nitro. Add a bit of vodka. And then we're going to add the rum. And I always prefer using a golden or dark rum. I'm not a big fan of white rum. 
And then I'm going to add the pineapple mango juice to this particular cocktail. And then I'm going to proceed to shake it. And by the way, this is rather interesting, but Starbucks is actually offering in certain locations liquid nitrogen and prepared coffee. I was going to say infused, but prepared is a better term for it. Because you can, you can add liquid nitrogen directly to a drink, but we're going to talk about what that happens if you do that. Because it can be quite dangerous to the actual person imbibing the drink. And this drink, by the way, is called a hand grenade because again, it is quite potent. So we're gonna dispense it into a glass that you might term a classic margarita glass, but it's a good all-purpose glass for these type of cocktails. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a peach garnish of sorts, just to give it some visual appeal. And I'm gonna squeeze a little peach juice out of here too. And here we have the lovely cocktail known as the hand grenade. And of course I have to taste it to make sure that it's up to par. Oh yes, that is quite nice, but indeed that is a cocktail that definitely packs a punch. This kind of reminds me of when we did the show about overproof alcohol in cocktails. You have to be rather careful. Although these drinks don't taste like they're laden with alcohol, they have quite a bit of alcohol in them. So we have to be careful when we drink them not to overdo, because that really detracts from the pleasure of it all if you overdo the drinking. But anyway, again, this is called a hand grenade and it can be prepared in that bowl with liquid nitrogen. But alas, we did it in a shaker, which is more friendly for home use unless you have deep pockets and can afford all the liquid nitrogen equipment and so forth, and if you're trained how to use it properly. And again, as I always emphasize in all my programs, let's be sensible in our consumption of alcoholic beverages. We want to enjoy them, we want to savor them, and we want to appreciate all the nuances that are in each individual drink. But let's keep our community safe and well spoken of by not overdoing our consumption of alcohol. Because again, it's like being greedy if we're served a meal and just inhaling the food. We're not really showing appreciation for the host, for the chef who prepared it, but rather we're just being greedy. So let us savor and let us enjoy and let us try innovative new cocktails all the time instead of just going back to old favorites. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist, and thank you for tuning in to Good Libations, which is our program about mixology. Thank you again. Goodbye.